Hello YouTube, this is Daniel here from DB Tech Projects, back here with another video. Um, in this video, I'm going to be showing you how we can get some stock prices from an API and then store them into a SQL database with PowerShell. So the function I've created here is called get stock prices. We can give it a list of stock tickers and it will then iterate through those and make an API request with this API here. And then with the with the ticker and the API key and the key here. I will post this link in the description where you can go and get your free API key. Um, there is a limit to the amount of um, requests you can make, but it is completely fine for development purposes to use the free version. And so we're creating the URL in this variable here. We then use the invoke REST method to commandlet to invoke a API request to the URL, and then we're going to convert that to JSON. I then have this other function here called pass JSON, and then we pass the response from this request here into there, and then we output the details here and then we just go go through that function so for this function we convert the api response from json and then we are iterating through those objects here and then creating a custom object that we can access the values from so we can see here ps item dot value so i'm just going to give you a quick example of this here so I'm just going to run this function. And I'm just going to quickly set up my key variable for my API key. Right, so now I've set up my key variable. I can now run the first function. So let me just bring this up here. So we're going to do get stop prices. And then we're going to pass in the list of tickers. So we're going to go for Google stock, Vodafone, and Apple. OK, so we've got this error here um, stating that pass JSON is not recognized as a commandlet. And, and that is just because we haven't actually um, run the function up here and declared the function so let's just go ahead and run that and now rerun that command and we can see we've got some stock prices back for Google and Vodafone we've got the correct prices here um, not too sure why we haven't got Apple let's just run that again And there we go. See, it does take a few times with this API. Um, I'm, I think it may be um, on the free tier. And there is some sort of um, exponential back off um, baked into this free tier. So when you're making requests, you can't just make like multiple requests straight away. And having multiple requests at the same time, it just won't give you any results. So sometimes you have to um, wait like a minute or so before you can or a few seconds until you can make another request but we can see here we've got the correct um, prices now for all the free stocks that we pass to it it also works with just um just the one stock as well as there's a for each loop in the command so I just want to show you a bit more of what this is doing so in the pass JSON is essentially getting the um, getting the variables that we want and the and the actual items in the API response. So we we just want the symbol and the price, but this API actually offers a lot more information. So let me just go ahead and show you here. So I'm just going to grab the 
URL. So now we have the URL variable set and we're going to run the invoke rest method commander with the URI switch, pass it the URL, invalid API call. Uh, okay, right, so that's because we haven't actually declared the element. The element is the key, oh, sorry, the um, the stock ticker. So if I just pass it Vodafone, and then we just go and invoke that um, API request again. And we can see here we've got um, some data back. And if I just pipe that to format list, or format table maybe, Okay. Okay, I guess we can actually um we can run what's already in the function, which is the convert convert to JSON, I believe. Uh, let's just check that out. Convert to JSON. And there we go. So that's a nice little output here. So we've converted the output to JSON. And then we can see we have the symbol. So the stock ticker, the open, um, the high, yes, so the highest price, the lowest price, um, the current price, the volume, the latest trading day, and the previous close, and then the changes. So now we've got this result. What we want to do is we want to post this to a SQL database, which I've set up here. So I've got a SQL database for stock prices 2020, and I've got a separate table, which I'm going to show you how to post the results to. I've It's just a basic table. I'm just going to show you some of the, how it's set up. So we've literally just got a column name, which is a 50 character var char. Um, that's not right. Design. There we go. So we've got a symbol, which is a varchar 50 data type. And it's the same for price and date as well. Um, you may want, if you're using it for a bit more of a professional setting, you may want the correct data types in there, such as number. But this is just for development. So yeah, just a basic SQL table. So let's go ahead and look at the, um, the function to send this data to SQL. So the function is called send stock price and you pass in a list of stocks and then it's got for each loop. So for lists in list, we're going to get the date using the get date commander. We then, we then use the get stock price um, commandlet to get the stop to get the stop price, and then we pass it the ticker, which um, which we get from the from the list of stocks. We then want the symbol, which is the ticker, with and then we're accessing the dot one um, the dot one item of that object. Sorry, the dot zero one symbol and then the price so the dot 05 price and then we can we're seeing that in this command here so with the when we're actually getting the the price from the ticker we're selecting the symbol and the price from the api response here and then we're essentially assigning those values to that object and then we're accessing them here with the symbol and price variables and then this bunch here is where we actually make the connection to SQL. Um, so this is our connection string. So this is the SQL server, the database. 
and here we've got some timeout settings and integrated security um, this is just this database is just using my ordinary windows credentials um, but if you're using a sysadmin password you would need to provide those credentials in here as well um, i'll post a link to the github for this in the description um, and also provide um, some further links on how we can modify um, this set of commands here depending on your settings for your sql server so we've declared the connection string we're then going to open the connection using that connection string we've then got the the command text which we're going to run which is um, the tsql command that we want to run so we are going to do an insert into table 2 with these values and we're inserting symbol price and the date we then cr create the command and then we execute it down here and we close the connection so let's go ahead and test this Right, so now I've declared that function and we're going to send stock price and we're going to pass it a list of stocks so Google Apple and then Vodafone sort that out okay and it hasn't come back with an error so that should be all good let's go ahead and check our SQL table and we're just going to select the top 1000 rows and we should see some more data in here yep so you can see here we've got the symbol of the stock the price and the date of when this was run as well and that's come back for all three um, commands so now, now you've got this working what you actually could do is you could set up a, a windows task to have this running all the time so let me just go ahead you <clears throat> go ahead and show you how i've got mine set up right <clears throat> so i have a tech stock price sql dump um, and that runs every every hour um, indefinitely and we're just going to go ahead and look at the settings for that so run whether the user is logged on or not run with highest privileges and then we've got the trigger which is just every hour and the actions and then we just start up the um the script here and we start it, yep, start in this directory and and yeah, just have have that run and send it to your SQL database. Um, I also have a little um function at the end of it to to write to a text file. So let me just quickly show you this here. So we're creating the it's essentially it's the same commandlet that we have here before. Um, but then we take the output of it and when we say if it contains one we're going to create a message variable stating written prices to database and then we pass it the date and then we are going to use the add content commandlet to add some content to this text file here which is just on my desktop with the value of message and it also writes the host message as well and then if we get any failures it will write the warning message fail to write values to db and then again it's just going to add the content with the date as well so let me just show you the output that i get from that yeah so this has been the long running text file so you can see i've had this running um yeah for about two months now and we haven't got many many failures but you do, you do get a few here probably just down to the sql service not running or me doing some development work but you can see it hasn't it hasn't failed to write to the database and the task has actually run successfully so i'm pretty pleased with that
So that is the end of the video guys. Thank you for watching. Um, as always, I will post all of the um, code that you've seen in, the, in this video into my GitHub and also provide you any, any other links for the technologies used. Um, please post any questions in the comments. Please like the video and please subscribe.